this, man. It's a quantum Bigfoot. I got one. I got one. It's actually older. If you look, his is a his is a Bigfoot TX. Uh, it's eight gigs. This is a Bigfoot CY. It is two gigs, and it's actually a bit of a different design. Yeah. So this is a five and a quarter inch drive. One thing I find very interesting that nobody ever seems to talk about is that it's actually pretty freaking thin. It's thinner than any of, well, at least most of its contemporary three and a half inch drives. Like, that is a, that is a thin, thin profile for a drive of its age. It's actually closer to something like the Seagate Barracuda line from early to mid 2010s. I guess the current ones are still kind of this way, but they're really thin. I don't want to bother taking this out of the enclosure from the Mac, from the Power Mac, or excuse me, the Mac Pro. But if you take a good look there, they have the same profile. That's pretty impressive, honestly. Now, I know this is a 2 gig hard drive, and it's 3600 RPM, I believe. And it's five and a quarter inch. It's massive. It's it's a, it's a waste of space, <laughs> frankly. Um, it's unreliable. It's slow. It's obnoxious. I love it. It's hilarious. It's a perfect candidate for my DOS machine because my DOS machine is actually quite a bit newer than any realistic DOS machine would be. It's been MMX two hundred. Part of its speed is from the fact that it actually has a nice 1998 model Western Digital Caviar in it. This would make it considerably slower. Also, I always liked how the Bigfoot line has this little window straight through to the disc where you can see the heads moving. We're going to connect the Bigfoot to the this really super janky Windows XP machine here, which might not even start up, frankly. It's got some weird issues. And we're going to copy the contents of the Bigfoot because it does have some stuff on it. And I just for the heck of it, would like to get it off. Um, we're going to copy the stuff from the Bigfoot to this 8 gigabyte Western Digital Protégé that I salvaged from an original Xbox. Fun fact about this drive, to use a drive from an original Xbox, you have to unlock it. They're locked with the IDE password feature. Uh, that's a method of security uh, to prevent console modification, actually, not actual security. So the password, or I guess password, is the console's unique identifier. So you have to actually find the console's unique identifier using homebrew software, and then you can unlock the drive. So that's what this is. And like I said, it is 8 gigs. It's not very big at all. Yeah, that's all I'm going to do tonight, I think, because I am really tired, and I would frankly like to go to bed someday. <laughs> so it's currently 1245 and I'm just gonna see what I can get out of this thing right now. I have already tested the drive. At first it like didn't want to spin up. I mean it spun up. It didn't want to pass its seat test. It did a couple weird things. But then after a couple power cycles it was passing its seat test consistently and it seems fine now. Probably just got a little banged up in transport and now it's fine. So yeah I mean it, I ordered this off eBay so yeah it's a uh, it was a steal at 20 bucks. These things are normally around 30 to 40. This was 20 because it was untested, I believe. So, yeah, pretty sweet. Alright, so I got the Bigfoot laying on top of the machine just because it seemed honestly the most secure that way. I didn't want to bother putting it in, actually. The protege is actually slaved to the optical drive. Remember, we can't slave the Bigfoot to the optical drive because Bigfoot ain't no slave. Anyway, let's turn it on and see what the heck the thing does. It may not even power on. Oh, nope, we're good. We've got a seat test from the Bigfoot. It's actually probably going to try to boot. That's going to be interesting. Go on, I'm Bigfoot. Focus, for Pete's sake. What the heck? This is dual booted.
<laughs> Dual booted with Windows 98 and 2000. <laughs> Windows didn't finish loading on the previous attempt. Okay, so then... Wait a minute, then what? There's only one partition. Also, what's on this protege? Oh, right, the protege has a Mac partition on it. That's right. Yeah, let's just see... What the heck we're even able to do here? I'll have to find a disk that I can use to boot from. Well, guys, I'm really not too convinced this drive's working correctly because, see, I'm going to try to launch Edit, you know, a very small DOS program. Watch when I press Enter. Why would it be doing that? Let's try scan disk. See, I must be having pretty normal. Yeah, we'll do a surface scan. Ah, yes. That might be all it is. Holy crap, that's fragmented. Wow. Wow, that's... that's bad. And obviously we've got some bad sectors that... Fun fact, um... Oh. You know, this is concerning. It is locked up. Well, we know it wasn't damaged in shipping, though, because there was already some already some problems with it. I can't do anything. Oh, I can turn the numlock on and off. That's that's wonderful. I'm really glad I can do that. It's uh, yeah, it's not it's not doing much. I guess we should probably consider it a lost cause. I should just try formatting the drive. See a new plan. Here's the drive. It works for the most part. Like, there's some random pictures in here and stuff. It's slow, don't get me wrong, but... Stuff is here. It's like working, sort of. Problem is... That some things are just... Uh, let's just Let's just give it an actual full format. We'll do it as NTFS. It's only two gigs, it shouldn't take too long. Yes. It's honestly, there's no way I'm going to be able to get in here at this point. It's a lost cause. It's somebody else's data. Who cares? I have a feeling those bad clusters are all that's wrong. It could potentially be fatal for the drive still. It's not having a good time. Well, I've tried quite a few different things now. We're not having any different luck, so... I may just need to be really, really patient to get this to work. I don't know. So far, not so good. Kind of disappointing, but... I'll mess with this more tomorrow, I guess, probably. Guys, I don't really know why I'm still dealing with this thing, but, um... I booted up Maxter Power Max, and, uh... Well, it said the drive was failing when I ran the actual test earlier, which isn't really a surprise, frankly. Because, I mean, it's a quantum Bigfoot. Um, the good quantum drives weren't exactly the most reliable things in the world past their actual usable lifespan. 
Um, but we're doing a low-level format, well, low-level format. Low-level format on an IDE drive just means you write zeros to the whole thing. Um, basically, what seems to have happened here is Windows was not doing the reallocation event operation correctly. Um, all of the bad sectors, I think it already got way past them. It made a funny little click noise at each one, and that was it. That was all there was to it. It didn't lock up or anything. Now, I don't know if this is going to actually fully mark them as bad or anything along those lines. We'll have to find that out the hard way, I guess. But as you can see, our maximum LBA is a little over 4 million. We're already almost at 2 million. So, yeah, it's going pretty darn fast. Things are going well. I'm well aware that it was a stupid thing to do, but I went ahead and turned the drive upside down so we could watch it. It's hard to tell, but that head is definitely moving. Very slowly. Something useful must be happening at this point. Oh. Hit a few more bad sectors, I guess, later on in the disc. Some more, possibly. Still chugging right along. Congratulations! Your drive has been rewritten with zeros. Press any key to continue. Hey. I'm gonna do what I think is called a comedy. Where's the any key? I actually think it's funny that the shift key doesn't doesn't always work in these things. J works though. All right, well, um, let's go ahead and uh, turn the machine off. And we're gonna boot back into Windows XP here in a sec. So we've got something of a good sign here. We've got unknown disk. Need to initialize it. This has been initialized. New partition. It's primary, blah, blah, blah. Formatted as NTFS. And the question is, does it stop? Unfortunately, yes, it still does. It would probably eventually format if I just left it here to do this forever, but that's really annoying. There's a lot of bad sectors at the beginning of this drive. What the heck? Uh, it's not midnight. I must have the time set wrong. Um, that's not why I started the video. Let me fix that real quick. That's... Yeah, it is, um... PM. Yeah, there we go. Yeah, it's a new day, and I finally got the drive to format. Fully. That's not a quick format. Uh, it turns out the first, like, 200 megs of the disk are damaged, which is not really a good sign for its health, but as long as I don't try to format that part, everything is fine. So, I created, like, a tiny partition there, didn't assign it a drive letter or format it or anything, then created another one that was the rest of the disk and deleted that one so that DOS would see that as the only one. And here we are. We now have a 1.7 gig DOS partition. It's supposed to be a 2 gig drive, but you know, you take what you can get with drives of this age. So, yeah. Yeah, so we're going to put this in my Pentium 1 now, and we're going to install DOS on it. Now, before we go crazy change or anything, I'd just like to make sure this works as is. That's such a nice sounding hard drive. I love those old caviars. There you go. Probably repurpose this drive. Like, keep it in the system since it's gonna have space for it. And I'll install, like, Windows NT4 or something stupid on it like that. Uh, as you can see, there's still freaking two whole gigs free almost. So, yeah. 
Oh yeah, F disk doesn't work because the zip drive is connected. I forgot about that weirdness. Well, let's just start Windows. Windows is going to be slow because I have networking enabled. Which I guess I don't really need to have, but... Or maybe I don't have networking enabled anymore. I at least have the network card installed. And we can, uh... We can play some Solitaire. Oh yeah. This is... The freaking life, let me tell ya. Oops. Oh, I'm stupid. Never mind. I'm not very good at solitaire. Whatever. Doesn't matter. That's it. I'm not here to play solitaire. I don't think the sound is working. I don't know why the sound isn't working. I even plugged it in the wrong port, but... Um, yeah, so that's working. Let's go ahead and swap in the big foot. The, the big foot. Wow, I screwed that up somehow. Alright, the Bigfoot's mounted at the top of the case, above the CD-ROM drive and the 5 and a quarter inch floppy. Let's turn it on, see what happens. <laughs> Sounds good. Well, obviously we're going to get a boot error because there's nothing on there. And there it is. I'll put in our DOS disk. I guess we'll keep using PC DOS 2000. <laughs> yes. Um, clock is uh, way off, actually. Um, it is. 13, 16, 16, don't actually even know what that is, but sure, yeah, why not, and here we are, we are installing DOS. Good old Bigfoot in there. Well, guys, DOS is installed. Let's see what it does. And there we are. We're at the PC DOS shell. Drive is working just fine. It's quite a bit later now. My Pentium 1 motherboard here does some weird stuff sometimes, and it just decided that it wasn't going to post for like over an hour, so I just gave it a while and came back to it. And I now have the copy of DOS from the old Caviar put back on here. And we are now able to run Windows 3.1 from a Quantum Bigfoot. I'm shocked at just how much quieter this drive is in the caviar. It's kind of hilarious. And here we are. It is noticeably slower than the caviar, which that was the goal. Let's check the clock. Is that right? Okay, yeah, it's still keeping time. That's good. Really haven't done a whole lot with this Windows installation. I haven't even set a wallpaper. Oops. What the, wait, what? If you double click the Windows 3.1 desktop, it opens the task manager? I literally didn't know that somehow after all these years. Okay, that's weird. Let's open the clock again. Yeah, why not? Um, yeah, everything's working. Um, except that. Uh, that's concerning. Is that my graphic card being an issue or something else? I think it's... What the... Heck? That... That's gotta be my graphics driver. This is an S3 Verge DX. It was never designed to run Windows 3.1, but... It has a driver for it, so I thought it would work. That's really odd. 
There's the driver. Yeah, that is bizarre. Okay, so could also be that I'm running in true color mode, which Windows 3.1 was also never intended to support. I say true color. That might just be high color. I don't know. Yeah, 64,000 colors. What other options do I get? Oh, yeah, I didn't pick true color because it was causing some other crazy issues. So, and let's, uh, let's take it back a notch. See if that solves the paintbrush problem that I've never before noticed. This drive has a way nicer sound than the caviar as well, in spite of being quieter. I just really like the spinning sound. Yep, that solved that. Well... I guess, guys, uh, you can't use MS Paint on Windows 3.1 with True Color enabled. Weird. Also, Windows looks practically no different between um, 256 colors and uh, 65,000 colors because Windows 3.1 was only designed to support 256 colors, and that's it. So, yeah. Anyway. Bigfoot has been installed in the machine. Also, there's my little... PCI postcard down there I was trying to use to diagnose the issue I was having, but nothing was actually even popping up. The only thing that, that was of note was that this far right LED, the one that's a little dimmer than the others, the frame LED, was not coming on while that was not working. I don't know what that means. It means something, I guess. Um, yeah. And the middle one being off is normal. Baby AT motherboards don't have a 3.3 volt rail, and that's what that light indicates. So, yeah, let's turn it off. As always, thank you for watching, and I will see you next time, whenever that may be.